ready to face torture, insanity, and death. I've gone on record multiple times now stating that Psychonauts is my personal favorite game, and even with the sequel being out and being fantastic, I still feel that the original still stands tall as my personal favorite game. But one thing I never really did with Psychonauts, for one reason or another, was go for 100% completion. That is until recently. I've always held the belief that you don't need to play every inch of a game to consider it your favorite, especially for people who really enjoy games like Destiny or World of Warcraft, where the experience is always changing and adding content, making that goal nigh impossible. But for a game like Psychonauts, where the game is largely complete and therefore completable, it's not necessarily an impossible goal, but it also isn't needed to truly appreciate it. And I say this as someone who goes out of his way to complete games for the sake of digital trophies and that satisfying little ding sound effect. Yeah, that one. So, why have I never completed Psychonauts before? Well, there's a few reasons. For one, I never really felt the need to get everything. The only reward for getting rank 101, collecting all of the figments and other collectibles, is a quick little cutscene featuring Linda the Lungfish, Shigor, and Mr. Pokeloke. For another, collecting everything in Psychonauts can be a daunting task in and of itself, which, again, isn't really needed to beat the game, let alone to receive some big reward in the end. And thirdly, this. The second part of Oleander's training camp, the first major brain level player's experience, and the game's mechanical tutorial opens with the player having to complete a target practice minigame to advance. Simply ground pound the button in the center to start, and using Raz's psychic chop, take out cardboard bandits while avoiding the cardboard babies until you either hit the target number of cardboard cutouts or run out of time. For most players, this is where their experience with this minigame likely ends. They'll move on to the rest of the level and merely see this minigame as a stopgap towards the rest of the level meant to help you learn the mechanics of melee combat in the game. But for completionists, this has become a stopgap of otherworldly proportions. You see, in order to technically 100% complete Psychonauts, players need to not only collect all of those figments in each level, rebrain all the kids, find all the scavenger items, and re-tag all the emotional baggage, but you also need to complete this mini-game to earn a otherwise hidden Psy rank that gets you up to rank 101. And the final level of this otherwise innocuous minigame is notorious for being a difficult slog for even the most seasoned veteran of the game. So here we find ourselves again with another episode of Trophy Tips, a show where I do my part and offer you some tips on how I did the thing so that you can hopefully earn this trophy and the eventual platinum for yourself. And just for posterity on this one, and so I could make sure there was no difference that I could see, I went ahead and did everything I talk about here on both my PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, with little to no difference outside of some minor frame drops that didn't really affect the experience on PlayStation 4, so regardless of the system you're playing on, these tips should help you earn this trophy. I have four tips for you all today on how to maximize your time towards this reward, so let's just jump right into it. Tip number one, get it out of the way. As I mentioned in my opening remarks, the Punchy Targets minigame is found halfway into Coach Oleander's basic braining, the tutorial level for Psychonauts. It's meant to help you become familiar with the game's close quarters combat, where you'll likely have a lot of enemies surrounding you, and you need to turn to face them and punch them in their dumb astral faces. But once you're done with the first level of this game and the coach blows Clem and Crystal out of his mind, literally, you're given the choice to continue through the level, or play more Punchy Targets. Now I know that some people I've shown this game to have complained about having to do punchy targets even just to continue playing through the main game. So I can understand why some people just don't want to play it all the way through its 5 difficulty levels just to earn a Psy rank. But I'm here to tell you not to wait. As soon as Clem and Crystal are blasted out of the coach's mind and you're free to continue, stay firmly in the area where you are and get the game out of the way. As you progress through Psychonauts, you'll likely find yourself relying on different kinds of combat, so doing this particular challenge right away as opposed to potentially 10 hours down the line means you're still fresh on how it works. Rolling right into the next level when the mechanics and timing are still fresh in your mind will only benefit you, but also knowing how combat works is essential. And that leads me to tip number two, One Finger Death Punch. The combat in Psychonauts largely revolves around a few key actions. Punch things that are close, shoot things from any distance, so long as you have the ammo, and shield when needed to avoid attacks or to repel certain enemies' attacks. 
You're also able to set enemies on fire with pyrokinesis or throw things at them with telekinesis, but these are the core three attacks that you'll be using primarily throughout your combat experience. And as you progress through the game and increase Raz's Psy rank, you can upgrade these abilities just a bit, including making your Psy bullets ricochet off enemies towards other ones, and adding spikes to the shield to hurt enemies who attack you while shielding. But aside from an upgrade to the Palm Bomb Ground Pound move, the melee attack is just your typical 3-hit combo of a right strike, left strike, then palm strike. This 3-hit combo is ideal for dealing with multiple enemies, but here the targets only appear one at a time, making the timing of the 3-hit combo not effective. To that end, trust yourself with only single punches. By the time the 3-hit combo or even a 2-hit combo would be done, you could let upwards of 4 targets pass you by, thus losing you points. Focusing instead on single, concentrated strikes is key to optimizing your attacks here. But it's not enough to just hit them well and have good reaction time. You also need to be within range, and in a good place to move if need be. So that's where tip number three comes in. Tip number three, reduce, recenter, repeat. The punchy target minigame isn't as simple as having a shooting gallery of targets moving left to right, or shooting enemies from passing a certain boundary. Instead, targets pop up randomly from specific locations in one of two circles surrounding the start button. It's very easy to just get into the mindset of moving from target to target, but it's important to avoid that mentality. Because the targets appear in the circle, it's best to try and instead focus on having the best route towards the targets as you can. Each time a target appears, instead of running straight to it and waiting to see where the next target appears, run to your target, hit it, and then immediately rush back to the middle of the arena. That way, if your target is directly across from you, you're already on the way, but if it's closer to where you were, you're just as far away and you can get the timing down a little bit easier. Bringing yourself into the center also helps when things start getting faster. Eventually, the game will have targets pop up in the middle circle only, and quick enough that two can appear every second. Recentering gives you more of a chance to reach targets that drop almost as fast as they appear, and it's here that your metal will truly be tested. And that's why tip number four, Keep calm and punch on. This minigame, despite its simplicity, can be a difficult task for just about anyone. I personally avoided it for years when I was younger simply because I had no patience, and this game certainly tests that when things start going fast. Getting angry can help some people to be more focused or concentrate more, but honestly it's best in these situations to just take a step back, reassess the situation, and try again with a clear head. Were you in the middle of a run where you missed three targets in a row, hit a baby, and only have 20 seconds left? Just set down the controller, let the timer run out, unclench your jaw, and take a breath. Keeping yourself from getting overwhelmed will help you a lot with difficult challenges in games, but with this one in particular, simply because of how aggravating it can be and completely unlike the rest of the completion process, which in itself just makes it a more aggravating. Kind of like another trophy I know. But, uh... That's about it. It may seem like simple stuff on paper, but you'd be surprised just how effective simple little things like this can be helpful towards overcoming seemingly arduous challenges. And I once again say this as someone who not only goes out of his way to get platinums in a lot of games, but someone who has done this particular challenge many times across different consoles over the past 15 years. I sincerely hope that the tips I offer in this video help some of you to get this admittedly annoying trophy, and please let me know if there's any more videos like this you want to see from me. I have a few ideas for other trophies I want to tackle in the works, but suggestions are always welcome. Thank you very much for watching. Feel free to do all that fun YouTube-y stuff down below. Follow me on Twitter if you don't already, where I post the occasional poll for upcoming videos and silly stuff like this. And I will see all of you in the next video. Take care.